Hello again, folks. I wanted to take some time today to talk to you about a new and improved feature in Microsoft Windows Server 2016 that is Storage Spaces Direct. Um, Storage Spaces Direct is Microsoft's implementation of the hyperconverged infrastructure. Um, there are so many different reasons why hyperconverged is a new and exciting thing that's going on in the world today. Um, but it seems to be um, this kind of this this role or this this implementation that is very daunting. Um, you know, when, when junior admins or people who are getting started in, in the business are hearing about hyperconverged, it seems like a whole nother world that uh, you'll never even come close to touching. And what I wanted to show you today was that in Microsoft, in Windows Server 2016, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad to implement. It's not that bad to understand. Um, but before we can even get started in that, we need to talk about what hyperconverged infrastructure even is. What does it do? What does it mean? Why do we have it? So to get started with that, we have to actually take a look at the traditional model of implementing an infrastructure. And to do that, I'm going to use some amazing Google stock photos with Microsoft Paint. Uh, if I'm nothing, I'm not resourceful. So um, let's get started with that. The traditional model, we've got two servers here, right? And this is where all your computing is done. These things might not even have hard drives plugged into them at all. Uh, it could boot a uh, nano server or ESXi directly off a USB, and it gets its storage over the network. The storage, which is down here, kind of at the bottom where my mouse is, um, it would go through a, a pretty nice and expensive switch, maybe fiber channel, um, and then get connected to this storage down here where it all lives. Uh, what hyperconverged does is it just eliminates this model altogether. Let's say I've got two servers here that each have their own drives built into them. You know, drive one, two, three, and four. And this guy over here has drive one, two, three, and four built into it. Why do I even care about this storage anymore down here when I can pool all of the locally attached storage together? That's what hyperconverged does, is it takes locally attached items uh, spread out across multiple servers and pools them all together. So um, to do this, you know, there's a lot of uh, competitors out there with vSAN or um, even Nutanix. Uh, they're all out there and they've got different implementations where they add these layers in between the compute and the networking and the storage. Um, Windows Server 2016 doesn't quite do it like that. It does it uh, all through PowerShell, all pretty much, um, you know, at kind of the, the GUI or compute layer. Uh, you can take a look as we go through these steps and see for yourself. Before we begin, though, let's talk about the requirements. Um, one of the big things with Storage Spaces Direct, or S2D, as the kids are calling it these days, um, is that you can only run it on Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition. And, as of now, they've switched to two different servicing models Microsoft has for Windows Server. Um, there is now the long-term servicing channel, which is what you're pretty familiar with, the one that has a year attached to it, Server 2016, where that's, that edition, that version that you have is going to be supported uh, for a long time with security patches. And they have the semi-annual channel, where they're going to come out with two feature releases per year for that operating system, but after a year and a half, it's not supported anymore. You have to migrate it. The semi-annual channel does not support storage spaces direct. So this is pretty much only applicable to the people who are on the long-term servicing channel and it does work for all three versions or deployment types if you will of Windows Server. That would be GUI, Core, or Nano Server. Um, that being said they're talking about removing it from Nano Server. This Nano Server is constantly in flux um, so who knows what they're going to do there. Um, but as of now you can deploy uh, storage spaces direct on um, GUI core or nano server as long as it's the data center edition. All right, let's dive in. Let's take a look at what I got in my lab here. Um, I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to minimize it, I guess. And what I did here is I've got a Hyper-V host and I created two, um, two, two little VMs here that are going to be uh, part of this hyper-converged infrastructure, just like we were looking here, these, these guys. Um, and I did, in fact, give them four hard drives. So they installed the operating system on the C drive, and then I attached four additional hard drives for each of these. Um, in fact, we can just bring it up here. You can see this is 
uh, Storm S2D2. Uh, there's a Star Wars joke in there somewhere where you can see I've got four uninitialized offline hard drives. That goes into requirement number two. What is required of the disks to do this? Uh, you can use NVMe, you can use SSDs, and you can use uh, regular spinning disks. Um, for this case, uh, this being a VM, uh, the operating system is only going to see them as spinning disks. But if you do implement this with NVMe or SSDs and spinning disks, a combination of them, it will all have different performance implementation, impl implications excuse me, um, because S2D does tiering. Uh, so if you implement, let's say, SSDs alongside hard drives, the SSDs will act as a read and write cache where the hard drives will just provide your capacity. In this case, again, we're just using four 10 gig drives that are gonna show up as spinning disks. All right, let's get started. I've done nothing to these machines except join them to the domain and fix their, their time zone. Um, so let's get started. We can do this whole thing through PowerShell. Uh, the first thing is to install the features. We have to install the file server feature, failover clustering. We do not need to install Hyper-V, but I'm gonna do it just for good manage measure because it's fun. And you know what, I'm also gonna do include management tools. Run it. Then we'll take a little pause here and come back to it. Okay, that did get done, um, installing those features. And uh, one thing I will say is it did require a reboot, as you can see with the orange font right there. So I just went ahead and did the invoke command restart the computer on those two machines. Um, just as a reminder again, uh, if you are cluing in for the second part of this, we've got four disks that we're going to be adding to these hyper -converged, this hyper-converged infrastructure on each of the nodes. Um, so there's going to be eight disks in total. Uh, each of them has 10 gigs. Um, they're going to be showing up as spinning disks. Um, and all I've done to these machines now is join them to the domain, fix their time, and install the necessary features. So moving on to the next part. What we have to do to do this is first create a cluster, but make sure we specify the no storage. There's no centralized storage yet because we're going to be pooling and using the locally attached storage. I mean, this is hyper-converged, right? That's, that's the entire point. Um, we're gonna be doing it that way. Uh, and then the very next command, because there's only two nodes here, we've only got S2D1 and S2D2, uh, we have to special, specify a, a quorum witness. Um, 2016 does uh, quorum witnessing a little bit differently now, um, outside of the fact that you can now use uh, an Azure storage blob for it. Um, they also improved on how the witness actually works with what's called dynamic witnessing. Basically what that means is no matter how many nodes you have, it's gonna allow you to fail all the way down to the last node. So for instance, right now we've got two nodes. The nodes, uh, because this is a split vote, there's no telling who's really going to be in command. That's why the witness is going to be the tiebreaker. If this one says, no, I'm in command, and this guy says, no, I'm in command, the, the witness is going to be saying, hey, that guy's really the one who's in charge. So pretend for a moment we had four nodes. Uh, you'd be split two for two. We would add a file share witness or uh, an iSCSI uh, quorum witness or a cloud witness, and that would be the tiebreaker for those two. But then what happens when one fails? Well, when one fails, we've now got three nodes and a witness. Well, that splits the vote again, two for two. In 2016, the dynamic witness withdraws from that, from the, from the tie-breaking role whenever there's a node failure and that creates an even number of, of votes. Um, then after that failure, it adds itself back. That's how we can go all the way down to the last one. That's just an aside, that's a tidbit, that's not super critical to know for Storage Spaces Direct. All right, let's go ahead and create this failover cluster. We're gonna do the new cluster. Here's the name of my cluster, Storm S2D. The nodes are Storm S2D1, Storm S2D2. We're gonna give the cluster a static IP address and we're not going to have any storage involved with this just yet. Go. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as I click stop there, that's when it went through all of the paths here. Um, and 
there's these warnings that they're talking about that's going to prevent the role from starting. Well, this is obviously that we haven't specified the quorum yet, um, but it did create it uh, as, a, as an item in Active Directory now. Uh, let's go ahead and get that quorum taken care of right away. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now we have a cluster in place. Uh, the cluster should be functioning with no issues. It's time to actually tell this cluster, pool your storage. And this one command, enable cluster storage spaces direct, in fact, you can actually type enable cluster S2D, it will work, on the cluster that we just created. Uh, that will do the trick. That's going to create a storage pool of available storage right there on the spot. Let's do it. Yes to all. Okay, after a little bit, that command completed, and we are now ready to check out what we've got going on. Let's hop in one of these guys. So as you can see, the disks that were in disk management, they're no longer here. That's because they're being pooled now in the storage pool. And where can we check out the storage pool? Well, in Server Manager, we can go to File and Storage Services, Storage Pools. Give it a second to connect. And look, as you can see, we've got the S2D pool on Storm S2D. That's our failover cluster. And remember, we had eight total disks of 10 gigs each, roughly 80 gigs, with some little bit of metadata in there eating it up. We've got a free space of 72 gigs. Very cool, very neat. So um, with that, and check it out, like down here, we can see all of those disks, but you can see uh, where they're popping up, you know, they, it does say that they're all in S2D1. They're not they're, they're spread out um, But here they are. We've got this new pool. So uh, to finish it up. It's time to create a virtual disk on that pool And what we're going to do is we're going to not only create the virtual disk We're going to mount it to the cluster shared volumes um, big part of the the failover clustering uh, we're going to make this the size of 20 gigs. Uh, the cluster shared volume, if you're not familiar with it, it is a way to um, create a volume that all of the devices who are trying to access that volume, they can access it simultaneously. Um, one of the limitations to NTFS and REFS is that only one node or one machine can access that file system at a time. If they both try and access it and both try and write it at the same time, they're not in coordination with each other. They could end up overwriting each other's metadata and you lose all of that data. Cluster shared volumes fix that issue uh, so that uh, these two devices, these two nodes in this case, can access the file system at the same time. One of them is designated the coordinator so that it can coordinate who is allowed to write and at what time and at what sectors. All right, um, that is a big deal for Hyper-V. Uh, as well as um, scale out file servers uh, where multiple nodes are going to be accessing these, these shares at the same time. That's where we're going to store our VHDs and our VHDXs. It's also where we're going to store our SQL Server databases. Anyways, uh, the idea here is that we are going to uh, create a 20 gig cluster shared volume um, on this new pool. Let's hit go. And it's done. Checks out okay. Let's give this a little refresh.
Check it out. Volume 1 of our clustered storage. There is the Storm Disk. It is set into a mirror format, uh, very similar to um, RAID 1, if you're familiar with that. Uh, so, yeah, very cool. Um, you could now use this to create a uh, Hyper-V VM and place the VHD here. And that way this VHD would be spread out uh, across your nodes that are in the hyper-converged infrastructure. Very cool. Um, like I said, this is a lab environment, so obviously performance uh, is not going to be as amazing as, as it would be if I had done this directly on the host themselves uh, or if I had some modern hardware. Uh, but hopefully uh, this shows you that, you know, the, the, um, the commands to make this happen, they're not that bad. Um, they're, they're really not that bad at all. Uh, it's just create the cluster with no storage, set the quorum witness, and then enable cluster S2D.